Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and we are continuing Eddie Brock week. We're almost at the end, though. Uh, we have this book we have to go over today called The Venom Agenda, and uh, and then tomorrow we're going to talk about Venom Finale, uh, and that's the final miniseries from the 90s of Eddie Brock and Venom, because after that, he kind of disappeared for a while, and that goes, you know, he disappears for, I think, like a year or two, and then he pops up again in Howard Mackey's run of Spider-Man uh, back, you know, when, like, John Byrne was doing Spider-Man and Amazing Spider-Man, and then Howard Mackey came in as a, as a co-writer and then took over the book as a writer. Writer, and that's when he like ingested carnage so we already talked about all those stories so you know finale will be the last story to kind of bridge us between stories we've already talked about and you know where we're at right now and so where we're at now and today is going to be this book called the venom agenda and this is a one-shot book i think a lot of you probably have it in your collections i know some people were like venom agenda i don't remember that book i don't remember what it was and it's because it's not a mini series uh, for some reason you know they just decided to do a one-shot book on this and I don't know why, I'll be honest with you. Like Tom Lyle's art in this is really great. I've always been a big fan of his, so I'm not gonna have the scanned images showing up on screen just from time to time. I'll show stuff, you know, I'll just pop up a page and just show you guys what the artwork looks like um, because this is probably not gonna be a long review. I can really summarize a story very briefly. But before we do that, um, I do want to say that, you know, rest in peace, Tom Lyle. You know, he's a great guy, teacher, passed away uh, from a brain aneurysm rupture. And I am a brain aneurysm survivor. And it, it you know, it hurt hearing that. It always hurts hearing uh, people suffering through that and and, uh, and and dying and losing their life from it. It does affect a lot of people. And uh, if you want more information, I'm going to put a link in this episode down to the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. Uh, and I'm going to include it from here on out. I've, I've included it in the past and many episodes in the past. But uh, I want to start doing it again because I know I have suicide, uh, you know, prevention stuff down there. But I want to put the brain aneurysm link down there and just get more notice on it and more people, you know, just being aware of it and talking about it uh, because it is a cause that's near and dear to me. And then after hearing about Tom's passing from it, it broke my heart. So uh, from now on, you will see aneurysm link. It, like I said, it used to be on every episode before. And then for a while, it went away. I don't know why I took it away. I, I don't know, honestly. Uh, I think I accidentally deleted it out and just didn't pay attention. Um, but anyway, it, I'm going to put it back in here and it's going to be there from now on. So, uh, you know, please go over there, check it out, check out any information you can find over there. If you want to read about it, hashtag stop the pop. And then also, you know, you can donate to them as well. So I'll get that plug in there and talk about that um, and say thank you to the Aneurysm Foundation for in the past reaching out to me and us talking and working together uh, and and helping me you know bring you know soul star to life and getting it out there and raising awareness so um, and I'll try to do more stuff you know in the future but for now at least I'll put the link and you know you guys can always see it down there if you ever need to check them out and learn more information about brain aneurysms and how you can hopefully prevent them and save someone's life who's suffering you know might, might be suffering from one so um yeah knowledge is power right so with that said and out of the way you know I love Tom's work I love his stuff and um and this book is no exception uh, i love every page in here from an art standpoint but this has to be one of the most non-stories in a comic book i've read in a long time uh you guys know how i felt about venom 25 by donny cates how the first nine pages were boring and it was a recap that you could have done in my opinion like two or three pages um especially the fact that when a book opens right when you open a comic in nowadays it has a blank page that tells you what's been happening in the book so you get a recap there and then followed by nine more pages of recap. It just kind of like, it it, aggra it aggravated me. And it's and that's what this book does. This book aggravates me. Larry Hama, I know, is a good writer. But this book, may, it doesn't make sense. I feel like this is just to exist to show off Tom Lyle's artwork, which is fine. That's really great. I love Tom, Tom Lyle and I love his art. So it's good to have it in that regard for my Tom Lyle collection. But this story makes no sense and it has no purpose at all. Um, in fact, actually, I'm going to show a real quick video here from our friend Wiener Schnitzel. We're going to cut to him, and uh, he's going to tell us just a brief summary of kind of what you can expect to read in this book, and then I'll come in and elaborate afterwards. So Wiener Schnitzel, who's in the field at our toy warehouse, take it away, my friend. Hey, guys, it's me, Wiener Schnitzel, and I'm reporting in with another reenactment of a battle from a comic book that involves Venom. This is called Spider-Man, The Venom Agenda. And, yeah, this book is uh, pretty much a waste of time. Luckily, Tom Lyle drew it, so it's really cool. But uh, this whole story just is all about a misunderstanding. And that's it. That's the whole story. Uh, it kind of starts off with, you know, we have Spider-Man and Venom are the two main characters. But it really kind of starts off with Venom and our friend... Agent Smith, uh, who is going to be played here by Agent Venom. And he comes up and says, Hey, Venom, uh, I have a mission for you. Oh, yeah, what's that mission? Uh, I just need you to, like, take care of someone, if you know what I mean. Yeah, who's this someone? 
Uh, his name is J. Jonah Jameson. Oh, I hate J. Jonah Jameson. I'm happy to take care of him for you. Cool, so you get what I mean by take care of him, right? Yeah, I do. I'll go take care of him right now. Okay, buddy, have fun. And then you have Venom going out and trying to take down J. Jonah Jameson. And that's pretty much it. But it turns out Agent Smith didn't actually want Venom to kill J. Jonah Jameson. Just kind of scare him. So why didn't he just say that? I don't know. So this whole story is all about a, just a giant misunderstanding. And Spider-Man gets involved. He has the flu. But luckily it's not, you know, a really bad flu because he's still strong enough to fight and beat up Venom. And he gets into a massive battle with them. He even beats them so bad that Venom gets amnesia by the end of the story. And uh, don't forget, Mary Jane shows up uh, to just be a character who shows up once. And then she shines a light in Venom's eyes, and that doesn't really work. And then he goes to attack her, and Spider-Man comes in, beats up Venom, ba 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 ba, and saves the day. Goes home with Mary Jane and uh, eats some soup, and then he feels better. And that's pretty much it. The whole book is a misunderstanding, all because Venom doesn't understand that Agent Smith is asking him to take care of J. Jonah Jameson when he really means just scare him, I guess. Although he's a special agent that has been sent on missions to take down terrorists and bad guys. So why wouldn't Venom think that he has to kill J. Jonah Jameson? I don't know. Just one of those weird Larry Hama stories. Anyway, back to you, Seek. Thank you, Wiener Schnitzel. Again, you know, maybe an oversimplification, but that's okay. I'm glad you're having fun over there playing with your toys. It means a lot. And thanks for helping me bring that footage to our viewers here. And then we cut to Eddie and he's here with Agent Smith and Agent Smith is bandaging his head up. And he's like, hey, you know, what's going on? I saw you take a bunch of hits to the head. Are you okay? And he's like, yeah, you know, Eddie's like, yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm just a little dazed. Earlier in the story, Eddie Brock kept saying how he was going to reveal Peter Parker's identity to the world and tell everyone that he was Spider-Man. And so, uh, so that was a threat that was looming. He was like, you know what? I'm going to tell Jonah who you are. I'm going to tell the world who you are. Uh, and then Spider-Man's like, I don't care. I'm taking you down once and for all. So Spider-Man causes so much brain damage that Eddie actually forgets that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, which is interesting because wouldn't the suit help him remember? The suit also has that memory. I feel like a lot of times these writers forget that the symbiote is a memory hub. It takes your memories like it did from Peter Parker and it transferred them to Eddie Brock when it bonded with them, right? And gave all of Peter's memories to Eddie, which is why Eddie instantly knew Peter Parker was Spider-Man. Then when that goes to Matt Gargan, Matt Gargan learns things, you know, about, you know, his past. I guess he didn't learn that, Ed, you know, that Peter was, uh, uh, was Spider-Man, um, I guess. <laughs> so, and maybe it's because of this. Maybe the suit took so much damage, it affected memories. Maybe, and then Eddie took so much damage. I don't know, but I feel like the memory thing is something that writers forget all the time. So the idea of someone having amnesia around a symbiote seems weird to me because I feel like as long as the symbiote too had those memories, it could feed the back into the person. But maybe this is what Donny Cates is you know, uh, you know, pulling some of his stuff from about which memories the suit chooses to give to Eddie or give back to Eddie. Maybe it's one of those things, you know, I don't know. It doesn't, I don't, doesn't, it doesn't make, that's a retroactive retcon. So that doesn't affect really this story when it was written at this time. But uh, so yeah, so it just has Eddie at the end and he's like, yeah, I, I think there was something important I had to say about Spider-Man, but I don't remember what it is. Um, and so, you know, th that basically showing that Peter's in the clear and that he's, you know, his identity is not going to get revealed by Venom. Although uh, that does come back later in, in future stories where, you know, Eddie does threaten that. Uh, but we've already talked about a lot of those, you know, during the Howard Mackey run and other things. Uh, so, um, so yeah, so the next story we have left to finish off Eddie Brock week is called Venom the Finale. And this is a story I have still not read yet as of recording this episode, um, but I will read it as soon as I, you know, later tonight, probably I will finally read the story. And I don't think I ever read it before in the past, like as a, as a kid or as an adult, like I don't remember the finale at all. I remember it existed, but I don't ever remember reading it. And so uh, I'm looking forward to sinking my teeth into that because that is going to be the finale of the 90s run of Venom. And uh, and that concludes basically all the past stories about Venom that we haven't yet talked about. Obviously, we're not going to talk about wild things or some of those appearances in those books because some of them were real appearances. Some of them were like a digital hologram of Venom and Carnage. And it's just like, yeah, those don't really carry on the arc of the story. You know, we did some fun crossovers with Eddie and Venom. Uh, but anytime we talk about other Venom stuff that takes place during this period, It'll be like what ifs or alternate universe stuff. And we'll get into those probably next season on the show. We'll probably do more alternate universe stuff. Uh, but for this, you know, what did you think of Venom Agenda? Have you read it yourself? I mean, like I said, to me, when your whole story bases on two characters misunderstanding each other and then the rest of the issue is just two action figures smashing against each other until one of them gets so much head damage that he can't remember what happened. 
that's your story. Uh, it's it's a great showcase for Tom Lyle's art because you know Tom Lyle was great at action, and so there's some good action in it from a from an art standpoint. So I'll give Larry Hama credit there. He knew how to utilize his artist in the best way possible as far as what the artist could visually do. But the storyline is just. It doesn't exist. There's nothing there. Nothing is accomplished to this issue. Like the only thing that gets accomplished is Venom gets amnesia for Spider, you know, remembering who Spider-Man was. Which, if you just wanted that one thing to happen, you could have put that in anywhere else in any other books that he was doing, and you could have done it in a much less page uh, count than this. So to me, this isn't a huge waste of paper. You know, like I sometimes will say that it was. It's, it's a shame that a tree died for this. I don't feel that way because. Tom Lyle's attached to it, and I love that guy, and uh, and I miss him. So, you know, I'm not that negative on this book, but from a story standpoint, I feel like um, it could have been done better. Uh, and this story about J. Jenner Jameson being attacked with Spider-Man involved, there's a story there for sure, and there's a good way to do some closure there with all these characters. Um, but this, and with bringing Mary Jane in and getting her some closure of overcoming her fear and, you know, maybe attacking Venom to save Peter you could have done some real character stuff in this issue and it wasn't done it was just treated as like a, a stupid you know action figure battle and that's a shame so those are my thoughts let me know yours down below and as always we'll continue our conversation down there and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out tomorrow will be the finale of our eddie brock week and the finale of the 90s venom stuff with venom the finale and i can't wait to talk about it so we'll see you guys in thanks so much for watching the show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the future peace